Welcome to the demonstration of Tsunami Deployer. During this demonstration, we will perform a migration from Confluence to SharePoint 2010 using Tsunami Deployer. This presentation will go over the four main steps of the migration process. First, we will export the source content from Confluence. This can be done from within the deployer or as a standalone process. We will then load the content to a deployer project. Next, we'll perform the virtual deployment along with all of its relevant configurations. And finally, we'll commit our migration specifications to SharePoint 2010. We will start by creating a new deployer project. When we click on File, New, Deployer will create a new project for us to work on. We are prompted to give our project a name. We'll call it Confluence Demo. Next, we'll specify the project folder using the Browse button. We'll now choose our source and target systems from the list. For this demo, we'll choose to deploy from Confluence and deploy to our target, SharePoint 2010. Our new project is ready for migration. As you can see, a deployer project is divided into two areas. The top area is for the source content, in our case, the content that will be extracted from Confluence, and the bottom area is for the target, SharePoint 2010. In order to load the Confluence content, we must first export it. This is done by right-clicking the Source panel of the Deployer window and selecting Export Confluence to TDX, or clicking the Export button on the top. The Confluence Exporter Wizard appears. Under the General tab, we decide which types of items we would like to export, such as pages, attachments, comments, blogs, and bookmarks. Under the Advanced tab, we decide how we would like the exporter to handle versions, security, personal workspaces, and other advanced settings. We are now prompted to enter the connection details. We enter the URL of the Confluence server, our username and password. The next step will be to navigate through the Confluence containers and select the content we wish to export. We'll choose to migrate all the content within our Tsunami demo space. When exporting large amounts of content, the filter can be used to export only certain items which comply with certain conditions. For example, we can choose to selectively export content that was created before or after a set date. We'll now choose a destination folder for the export, where all extracted data will be saved on the file system. The exporter begins the export process. Tsunami Exporter for Confluence extracts the content according to your specifications and turns it into a file format that Deployer can read, the TDX. The export folder will contain the actual files and data extracted from Confluence, along with the TDX and STDX files, which are XML files containing all the information regarding metadata, structure, and so on. When the export is done, we can view an export report to show us the actions of the exporter. We move on and load the exported data into Deployer. We'll name our content and the content loads into the source panel of Deployer. Once Deployer is done loading, we can explore the hierarchy of the Confluence content and see that the same exported content now resides in the Deployer project, along with all of its metadata. For example, in this export we have properly extracted several blog pages and blog comments, multiple wiki pages, wiki page attachments, and comments. 
Similar to the look and feel of Windows Explorer, Deployer displays the content from the source with the tree view on the left and with the list view on the right. This allows us to easily browse through our content and understand our content structure. In the target panel of Deployer, we'll load the data from our target SharePoint 2010. This is done by right-clicking the target panel and then connect to SharePoint. We now have the connection wizard. We are required to specify the connection details. First, we'll fill in our server address. This can be done by entering the server's name or IP address. To make sure you have the correct information, please consult with your system administrator. Next, we'll enter our credentials. The user connecting to SharePoint must have sufficient privileges in order for Deployer to write the changes to SharePoint. Please refer to our Tsunami Deployer User Guide for more information regarding permissions. After the connection to the SharePoint server was made, we choose which web applications we would like to load into our project and click Next. We are now able to choose how we would like to load our SharePoint structure. It is recommended to load the minimum amount of content required for your specific migration project. First, we decide which sites to load into the project. For this demonstration, we'll select the site collection named Demo. When the Read Subsites option is checked, Deployer will read all subsites under the parent site. We now move on to reading the content. We can choose to read none of the lists, only the libraries, or all of the lists. The same applies for reading items. We can read none of the items, the latest version only, or all versions. When no sites and no lists are selected, the loading process is expedited, and we are able to reload any content from our SharePoint target panel at any time. Under the Active Directory tab, we can select the domains we would like to read into the project. This enables Deployer to retrieve a list of all available users and groups. When we are satisfied with our structure, we click Next and Done and Deployer begins reading the selected content into our Deployer project. Deployer is able to read all necessary content from the SharePoint server, including global and custom templates. Once Deployer is done loading, we can explore the hierarchy of the SharePoint content. Now that both our source and target are loaded into our project, we begin our deploy phase and start performing our virtual migration. To deploy content from our source confluence to our target SharePoint 2010, we can use several methods. The first and easiest of which is to drag and drop our selected content to the desired destination in the target. We'll select our Tsunami demo space and drag it to our demo site collection. The deploy wizard appears to guide us through the process of deploying the selected items to SharePoint 2010. In the first step, we choose if we would like to deploy the files along with their security. Choosing to deploy the items without their security settings will make the deployment process faster. We deploy the files without their security for the purposes of this demonstration. We start by specifying the global settings. Here we can decide how Deployer will name files with duplicate file names. We can also choose the specific number of versions to be deployed. Under the List tab, we are able to control some of the list settings in SharePoint, such as supporting major and minor versions, views, and attachments. In the Define Deployment Structure panel, we have the ability to control the hierarchy of our deployment, including site and list templates, folders, and so on. The deployer automatically suggests how to deploy the items from Confluence to the corresponding SharePoint 2010 items. 
we first decide how to migrate our demo workspace. We can choose a site template from the drop-down menu, which has all of the default SharePoint site templates, as well as the option to use custom templates. We'll use the blog template, which has been automatically selected by Deployer. We now have the option to define the deployment structure for the containers within our Tsunami demo space. For example, we'll choose to migrate our blog pages as existing posts. The blog page comments will be migrated as existing comments. The wiki pages will be migrated as a new wiki page library. The wiki page attachments will be migrated as a new document library, and the wiki page comments will be migrated as a new discussion list. Deployer also gives us the option to migrate our content with or without the hierarchy structure. If we choose flat deploy, the items are all migrated on the same level and the hierarchy is not deployed. Now we'll perform the property mapping step. On the left, Deployer displays a list of properties that exist in the documents from the source confluence. And on the right, we can view a list of properties that are available for us from the target SharePoint 2010. Deployer automatically suggests some of the basic mappings. For example, the created and modified properties are already mapped. Deployer enables us to map any remaining properties according to our specifications. We select the property from the source list and the matching property from the target list and click Map. The link above can be used in case the target has fewer properties than the source. This will tell Deployer to add any of the missing properties that we select. We'll choose to maintain the body and ID properties from the missing properties list. Now that we have finished mapping our properties, we need to map the associated values of these properties. Again, Deployer automatically maps similar values. For example, Jody and Marcy have already been mapped. As we did for the property mapping, we can select our own value mappings using the Map button. We are now ready to deploy. During this phase, Deployer applies all of the deployment settings and mappings that we have selected. When the deployment is finished, we can open the deploy reports. These reports allow us to view any errors and warnings that may have occurred during the virtual deployment. Here we see that we have four warnings regarding SharePoint naming conventions, which the tool is already designed to handle. We are now able to take a look at the results of the deployment. Within Deployer, we can view the properties in the target panel and confirm that the metadata associated with the items which we plan to migrate to SharePoint are all preserved according to our specifications. Now, assuming that we're satisfied with the migration, we'll commit the changes to SharePoint. By committing our project, we tell Deployer to perform all the changes that we made virtually and write these changes to SharePoint 2010. During the commit, the actual content migration physically copies the source items to the target library, list, or folder on the SharePoint site, while updating their metadata properties according to the Tsunami Deployer project definitions. Under the View tab, we can view the commit report to see the changes that were committed to SharePoint, 
and view any other warnings or errors that may have occurred when writing the selected content to our target. We'll right-click the new site and choose Open in order to open it in SharePoint 2010 via Internet Explorer. We can take a look at the site content and see that the migration was successful. This concludes our Tsunami Deployer demonstration for the migration of content from Confluence to SharePoint 2010. We thank you for your time and welcome you to visit our website in order to download an evaluation version of Tsunami Deployer for Confluence and learn more about the Tsunami family of products.